Hey everybody, welcome back to Intuitive Vibes, Narc Survival 101. Your girl Erica here with one of your favorite, favorite, favorite appearances. The only appearance. You know what? That's only because I allow you in my house during the pandemic. You're the only one I allow in my house, okay? We in the middle of a crisis, guys. Say hi. Amanda, in case some yes, of you who Amanda. are new. I'm sorry. Sorry. Today is supposed to be. going to put my be, name on, on, on a thing, too. And I am going to put, okay, I'm going to put your name. I'm going to put you. your name. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, no So, guys, today is um, episode, I don't even know. We haven't it's done been a while. Time it's, for I mean, quite some time. It's a one-woman show. Well, no, because you've done lives with me a few Yes, time, but it's so. been a one-woman show. It's been survival 101 we haven't done sip chat in what it's it's been a while it's been a while guys but we're here today because um we're just really gonna talk about something um of importance i think it's important and i'm glad amanda's here with me to help me discuss it because you know we we all have dealt with different types of people we've all dealt with different types of narcissists um I think in my case, I've dealt with narcissists, uh, bipolars, and possibly sociopaths. And one of the things I was thinking about, and I was thinking about this on my way home when I was deciding what we were going to do um, for the uh, video, was a lot of the things, like I noticed a lot of the things that were wrong with me mm -hmm. during those dynamics. And I noticed things about myself that... Um, and dealing with certain types of people, you know, uh, for example, I felt the need to try to fix situations that had nothing to do with me. Absolutely nothing to do with me. Like it, it, it's like, okay, say if the other person was going through something, mm -hmm. um, some type of problem, some type of turmoil, you know, if it was with their family or just uh, things that were going on in their lives. I took it as my problem. You you were the fixer. Yeah. Like I, I, but the thing was, not that I didn't want to fix things, not that I didn't want to help them, mm -hmm. but I didn't want the backlash of what it was they were going through. So in other words, if they were going through a situation and um, they were dealing with, you know, obviously things that were of a negative nature, mm -hmm. I would be the punching bag. I would be the one who received the the attitudes at the end, you know, like like because I'm I'm you know, I'm the one who is not putting you through those situations, right. but I'm the one who's receiving the, the ramific the ramifications of it. Of of it. Mm -hmm. And I found myself trying to it's like for example, if um you know, uh, <laughs> guys i've dated a few people and i'm gonna tell you something i don't know which one to use as an example but um it's just like for example if i'm you know just doing my own thing and then you know that person went through a situation or they're dealing with the hardship or they're dealing with something that has clearly got their mind you know frazzled or whatever mm -hmm. i would be the one to be like okay well what can we do to help you to right. fix the situation right. and you know they're they would be like well it's you know what can you do you know like it's it's hopeless it's this it's that i'm like no we could try to figure out ways we could try to do but there were also other times where i would be like you know why are you being this way towards me if you had nothing to do with if it. i had nothing like i understand you're mad i understand you're going through something but why are you being this way towards me and they would like literally beat me more with you know with the attitude with the you know you you just you don't get it you just don't can get it you know mm -hmm. it's 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 and I would try to help I would try to fix situations even though I was not the one who put them in these situations but I would take it all in and there was a time that I was I was one who was like, oh, no, you're not talking to me like that. 
You put them in their place. I would put them in their place. I'm like, mm -hmm. you're not talking to me like that. I don't know who the hell you're talking to. Was this after, like, after a time that they were doing it to you? Or was it, like, maybe you, you just weren't having it that day? Here's what I noticed. In the beginning, before an actual relationship was established, they would, if, 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 you know, the mask slipped, if the person slipped, whatever the case may be, I would feel some kind of way. First of all, I don't know you like that for you to be talking to me like that. Mm -hmm. That would be my attitude. And, you know, when they saw that I would stand up for myself, right. they'll kind of back down. Right, they, they would retreat in, in their emotions. And they would retreat, but it, you know what I took it as? Now that, now, now that I see everything for what it is, mm -hmm. I took it as you only back down because you said to yourself, too soon. It's too soon for me to be saying certain things. So this would happen to you early in a relationship? Sometimes. Sometimes it would, when, I mean, listen, when I met my ex, you know, when things were fine, things were good, but there were times when he would kind of like have a, a bad attitude. So I'm like, what's wrong? And, you know, it's, you know. Nothing about, I mean, he was very vague. Mm -hmm. He would always be, you know, he's very secretive. So, but there was that one time. Caught you on the wrong day. He caught me on the wrong day. <laughs> and he got really nasty, really nasty on the phone. And I'm like, yo, I'm literally looking at my phone. I'm like, who the fuck is this motherfucker talking to like that? And I'm like, no, there, because there's a way that you talk right. to people. There is a way you talk to people. And I was so like, I like you, bro, but you know what? No, this this right here. You get more bees with honey than you do with <clears throat> vinegar. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. And and I was, you know, I, I was like, no, no. Okay, yeah, hang up or whatever. You know, you're not going to. When you get the stick out your ass, call me back. I didn't talk to him the next day the whole day. We didn't, we didn't, he didn't hit me up. I didn't hit him up. And I was so adamant. Like, I was like, no, I'm not wrong in this. Mm -hmm. I'm not wrong in this. I'm not going to give in because that was when I was clearly when I was at my strongest because you know but naturally you know I guess maybe that was like when he saw I guess that I, you know I didn't speak to him I didn't say anything to him he got upset about it you know he was like but you know you know the story about what happened where you know he came he came to my job and you know and then it's like bro you gotta know how to talk to people you can't you 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 know, that's that's the one thing I've noticed about certain types of people, especially when they don't know how to communicate. Mm -hmm. I get it if you don't know how to communicate. But you must know if you are being nasty towards someone. You have to know these things. Like, it's, it's like, yo. It's, a, it's, a, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. I know sometimes, you know what? No, it is sometimes what you say because... I try not to be a literal person. I really try not to be. And I and I really try. Listen, guys. I try to not be pokey. And like when you say certain mm -hmm. things and you're not saying it in its correct. Because it's kind of like grammar. If you don't put a comma where it needs to be, the sentence can come out completely wrong. It can come out the opposite of what you're intending right. to say. And... When certain people, when I have conversations with certain people, I ch it's that's a pet peeve. That's something that I have. It's like, you know, okay, do you want to rephrase that sentence? And they're like, Ooh. you didn't get what I was saying. No, I got what you said. But I want to make sure that's what you were intending to say to me. And you forget who you're talking to. And that's, you know, that's what I noticed. So I, I noticed that like with me, but after it's like after a certain period of time, it's like after you have the attachment, you... Are no longer that same person you were before mm -hmm. the attachment, the complete and official attachment to someone. And I was just like, like, what the hell happened to me? I put up with things that I never would have normally put up with people. Right, you put down your guard for the sacrifice of the relationship because... I, I, I look at it as, okay, yeah, you got an attitude. You got some things going on in your life. I get it. But I was thinking kind of, I thought I was thinking logically where I was like, but I'm not the one doing this to you. I'm not the one who did X, Y, and Z to mm -hmm. you. I'm not the one. So why are you, why are you taking that shit out on me? 
why are you you know and you know why guys they do it because you let them you allow it yeah they do it because you let them you know <laughs> they slid the first time next thing you know they're fucking ice skating all around you yeah the speed skating around your your emotions and your they barriers just, yeah. they are just doing some tanya harding shit like what the hell are you but trying? then that's where you um cut them at the knees and you gotta cut it before it gets too big <laughs> listen i i learned that i'm not i'm not i'm not saving nobody I'm not saving anybody. The only one who can save anybody is Jesus. That's it. I'm not saving anybody. I'm not. You're not trying to be Captain Save a Ho. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Save a, but a Ho or him. It's it's just like, yo, you know, and, and I don't put, listen, everybody has seen my lives. Everybody has seen the videos I've done. I don't shame people. And, and I'm going to tell I, I, <laughs> As much as I talk about my last relationship, mm -hmm. I'm not shaming him. I'm not slandering him because everything that I have expressed has happened. Everything that I have expressed, I have gone through and I have every fucking right to be mad. Mm -hmm. I have every right to be upset. I have every right to want to rip his face off, but I don't do it. You know why? Because at the end of the day, it's like... <laughs> Yo, you, you already showed me who you are. So what's the point? What is the point? What is the point of doing these things? But when people like, if people like, you know, if I, if I ever talk to anybody, which I don't, I mean, you're pretty much the only one because you understand, mm -hmm. just like I understand your situation. Mm -hmm. I don't really talk about it with people like that because a lot of people who have not had narcissistic abuse, you know, physiological, psychological, emotional, or even physical abuse. Mm -hmm. They don't talk about it. No. They don't talk about it with people who... Could understand. You know, like, well, did I just say people who have never been through it? You see, I'm losing train of my thought already. Those who've never been through it, they can't understand it. They can't understand it. And I've seen, I've actually seen videos on YouTube telling people to stop watching narcissism videos. Why? Stop watching narcissist videos. And I'm like. But what, but what makes them qualified to tell somebody who's gone through that trauma, the discard and all that to stop watching those videos? <laughs> guys, if you guys want to stop watching the videos, that's your prerogative. But there's a new victim every day. There is a new victim every day. Someone to sit there and say, stop watching narcissism videos. And I'm like. I'm, is it a narcissist telling that person? I don't. I mean, I don't know because I, I've <laughs> seen some channels with some people that. You know, because I do watch other people's channels. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's just to kind of see their perspectives, to see what it is that, you know. And I'm like, you know, oh, you need to, you know, stop watching these videos, stop watching, stop watching. And I'm like, so why? Where you, so where do you reach out to? Who, where do you find an, a common community? I have, um, I, I just don't understand how you're, you know, you would tell people to stop. And... Listen, there are people who stop on their own. Mm -hmm. I had one person, he was in the live. Mm -hmm. And I actually had spoken to him through my DM on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And he even said, he was like, you know, I stopped watching the videos because now I know and I understand. And I'm like, that's great. That's fine. If you stop watching it on your own, if you stop because you choose to, you know, you choose to say, I don't really need it anymore. That's perfectly fine. But there is someone else so the choice of what stop watching the content is because you feel as an individual you don't need it. That you feel you're past that phase or that 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 you've learned the part in your life that you you feel you have you learned can guard enough. yourself. Yeah, and you know what to do. Mm -hmm. You feel you've learned enough. You know what to do. Congratulations, you graduated. You graduated the school of life, but. Who's to say that you're, there's never new things that you haven't learned? There's well, never new content. There's always, you 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 know what? Or a I'm, different way of seeing it from a different person. Well, I mean, if, if they, but if they choose not to, listen, if they kind of have an idea, which mm -hmm. is great, you have an idea, and you know what to look for, if you decide to start dating, if you, you know, decide to start going out there, excuse me, if you decide to start going out there to um to you know just to explore and expand you you can take the knowledge that you have mm -hmm. and apply it a 
apply it to your everyday life, you know, and use discernment. I always encourage use discernment. And if there's something else that pops up and you're like, Ooh, okay, wait, I didn't learn about that. You can always go back because think about it. You think about it this way with what you know so far, mm -hmm. you know what to look for. Right. And if something is thrown like a curveball, mm -hmm. you'll notice that curve in that throw. When you were walking with the veil on and you did not know what was going on, you never noticed any curveballs being yeah. thrown at you. But now you will notice those curveballs. So now you will say to yourself, yeah, I'm going to put you on hold for a second. I got to go check this video out real quick. When I'm done watching it, we'll decide from that point. You know what I'm saying? So I, I listen, I don't encourage people to not watch the videos. There are new victims every day. There are new victims every single day. There are re recurring victims. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there are victims who are at this very moment going back into a cycle with a manipulator, with an abuser. And I mean, listen, some, some people pick up faster than others some people it takes a little bit longer some people maybe just aren't quite getting it you know mm -hmm. but i don't i honestly do not believe in stopping when don't it comes stop to... it just bookmark them and be able to come back and know where you can find the information if you feel that you've lost your way yeah i mean it's 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 well it's similar to being a you know a, a christian or being a religious person sometimes we 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 fall. It's like, it's like the videos are like AA meetings. People who have an addiction, they eventually, sometimes they have to go back to meetings, even though they've been recovering of whatever addiction that they've had. Because but people have relapses. Mm -hmm. They relapse, and it's you know I I but when I when I you know going through you know because I I follow you know quite a few people and and i've seen you know a lot of people's channels their 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 content is good mm -hmm. their content is really good and i do mine i don't do mine like before i used so i'm not going to lie guys i used to plan everything out mm -hmm. you know based on of course education because you have to have facts you have to have facts but i've like grown so just grooved into it to the point where you know, I'm comfortable enough to express my own experiences mm -hmm. and put myself out there to let you know that I'm not just doing it from a textbook. I'm doing it from a you're place making, of experience. You're making it more personable than just te so technical. Right. And I and I think that it's important that people, you know, people who do who do make channels, who do, especially when it when it comes down to mental health and it comes down to the the different things that we discuss pertaining to mental health. Mm -hmm. You know, you are interacting with people it's important to interact that's why i do the lives every week because there's always someone new popping their head in and i encourage people I'm, a lot of the people who follow my content especially like the, the very the ones who've been there since the beginning the loyal, yeah, the real loyal yeah I, I encourage people to welcome new people with open arms because they need that they mm -hmm. need you know they Welcome need that, that to and we all need zone. the support no matter how far we are in our healing we all need the support and it's important to be there for one another that's why you know i do it but yeah i was i was telling you earlier also aside from the you know what i learned about myself clearly clearly you know what i'm talking about because you have been there yeah. so you know what i'm talking about as far as having the hero complex yes that's a, well, they well scientists psychologists or whatever mm -hmm. they haven't um diagnosed that as a mental illness although hero <laughs> complex hero complex they said that it's not you know i mean i guess if it's not in the dsm it's not considered a mental illness but i, I don't really I, I don't think i would i mean but isn't that i would say isn't that an instinct in every human in some form or fashion no not in every human Clearly it's not. Of course. Clearly it's not. But it's, it's, you know what it is? I think it's just when you are overextending your empathy, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's to that point where it's what I told you guys before, um, that thin line between mm -hmm. helping someone and trying to save them. So 
having that kind of complex is where you have crossed that line. You're no longer trying to help them. Now you're just trying to like, let me you're do trying it for to, you. Yeah. And that's the problem that a lot of victims of narcissistic abuse have had because they're like, yo, I can, I can change this person. Mm -hmm. If I love them more, I can change them. I can change them. Yes. Love is the answer to things because that's what God puts in our hearts. But let's, let me explain something here. <laughs> they know this. They know that you love them. They know that you will, are willing to do anything to, to kind of, you know, get them out of that. Like, even if you know, okay, I know you're a void. I know you hate yourself. I know you don't love yourself. I know this, I know that. But if I give you love, it's like, okay, let me let me share my love with you and maybe you'll learn. No, no, they have to, listen, they have to, this has to be done on their own. They mm -hmm. have to come to terms with what they got going on with them. And and it, it, to me, honestly, I, I look at it like, yo, I'm done. I'm, I'm seriously done. I help. This channel is to help. My content is to help. The things I put up is to help. The sessions I do is to help. But if, and I'm going to be very strict, strictly blunt and honest with you guys, because I don't do it any other way. If I'm helping you and you are consistently going back to an abuser, if it's a lost cause, it's a lost cause. Right, because you're taking the information and it's just going through it's one just going, the other. Exactly. And I'm not going to go... When I'm not going to take the, the information mind. and really help somebody who needs the who information wants to, and retain it. Who, you know, because you can help someone, but unless they really want to help themselves, they're just going to sit there and be like, oh, well, you know, Amanda, you're, you're here. You're you helping me. Uh, you can't lead a, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. There you go. And yeah. that is true. You can't. And I am not, because I just might push the horse's head <laughs> under the water. <laughs> Until they're not breathing anymore. That's it. That's it. I, I, I don't want to do it anymore. I no longer am that person anymore, man. That I have changed my outlook on everything. And I have changed my attitude on everything. And though it has not tampered with my empathy, mm -hmm. it has tampered with my empathy and sympathy for people who have put me in the position for mm -hmm. it to be tampered. So if you've ever lost my trust, it sucks to be you because... I'm not doing it no more. I'm I'm not putting myself in that position. But at the end of the day, yeah, I you, you know how I am. You already know how I am. I'm not I am not the kind of person that takes my trust being misused very lightly. Loyalty is very held high with you. It is very. It is very. And it's and my friends, my friends and my family know I'm very big on loyalty. I'm extremely big on it. I will give you my loyalty if I don't have to question you and yours. You have my loyalty infinity. But the minute you do something to put me in that position where I got to watch my back with you, it's pointless. It's pointless. And I, listen, as a Christian, you know, the people say, oh, well, you know, God says forgive. Okay. He says forgive, but I still got the mind. I don't forget. I'm not going to forget what you did. I'm not going to forget what you said. I'm not going to forget any of it. I don't. I won't. And as far as I'm concerned, you might want to take over. <laughs> oh, we pushing that line. <laughs> no, but what were we... Um, the different types of narcs that I was telling you. Um, yeah. Because a lot of people have, uh, you know deal with different ideas kind of about narcissists and mm -hmm. you know we we are well aware that there are several types of narcs mm -hmm. now you have um i'm not gonna go like full detail in in, in everything because i'm trying to keep this video <laughs> for a good amount of time but um we have you know subtypes we have main types and we have to be able to decipher because you can, for example, I already told you what I would classify your ex as. Right. All right. Now, you have extroverted narcs and you have introverted narcs. Mm -hmm. The extroverted narcs are the ones who are out there and they like to be noticed and right. materialistic. and They're just basically the spotlight stealers. Mm -hmm. The introverted ones are more like um, they, they seem antisocial. Yes. 
they're more in well, the what's an introvert an introvert is someone yeah like they're just you know stay inside they're, they're, nobody they're, knows about them type thing they they appear to be opposite of a narcissist but that's a typical narcissist a typical narcissist the least expected one of right then you have the overt and the covert narcs the overt narcs are like now, the extroverted the narcs very noticeable very out there you hear them before you see them type thing right you have covert narcs which are the stealthy ones they're behind the scenes mm -hmm. they're the ones who you know learn everything about you and then throw it on you later in the time and they abuse you mainly in private if they do it in public they mask it with i'm just joking you know they're just trying You're to sensitive i'm just playing around with you exactly then you have now those are the main mm -hmm. okay so it's like one or the other that's like the main types mm -hmm. then you have the many different types of narcissists that fall under these categories you have somatic classic cerebral malignant which is considered to be the toxic narc okay you have sociopathic narcissists which are the the really screwed up ones, the ones that, you know, are, they're very dangerous, extremely dangerous. Think Ted Bundy. Mm -hmm. Ted Bundy was a sociopathic narcissist, okay? He was very charming. He was very alluring. He was a good looking guy. And he attracted, obviously he attracted females. He got their trust. He managed to get their trust. And of course, once he got them to trust him, he ended up murdering all these women. Okay, so you know, sociopaths are very extremely dangerous, way more dangerous than a narcissist, but that of course depends on the scale. So, you know, because it's going into psychopathy, which is you know, the psychopaths, um, because they become physically dangerous, they can well, narcissists can be physically dangerous too. We learned that they can be physically dangerous, but it's it's when, when you're dealing with sociopaths, we're talking murderous type, you yeah, know, like. like They'll they cut can, your head off, they, stuff you in a, in a bag. Yeah, I mean, it's, when you hear about... Find you in a suitcase, in a swamp. These, you know, husbands who kill their wives or, or, or vice wives, versa. Yeah. Or vice versa, because women are more capable. And of course, you know, if they, if the, the women are good, if they're good at what they're mm -hmm. doing, you know what they do, because you have women that got, have gotten off. You know, Self sitting there. abuse, spousal abuse, domestic you know, violence. Crime, the crocodile tears and just, you know... And they stop taking their meds. It's 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 <laughs> and which is which is you know what though I I now let me ask you, can a perfectly I wouldn't say perfectly normal woman because she has to have an issue to or she would be codependent or something like that to be in a domestic violence kind of relationship to then become a psychopath or somebody that ends up killing her husband. Because he's pushed her to that brink. I believe it can happen. It, it um that's what I'm saying. Is it possible? It, it is. I possible. believe it can. I believe. I believe you can. It, but that's that's putting you in survival mode. You're you get to a point if you're in an abusive relationship, a physically mm -hmm. abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. You get to a point a, where, where you, you said I think you had mentioned it's a fight or flight. Fight or flight. Yeah, I mean, it's that's that's very common in a lot of situations, extreme situations. Being put into fight or flight mode is, you know, it's it's and it also depends on the circumstance of the situation. So like when I did the video on um the crash course, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the fight or flight mode in the discard is where you're like, do I fight for this or do I leave? You know, mm -hmm. it's 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 keeping you that discard is keeping you in a very unhealthy unstable position yes. but if you're in a situation where there's danger again you are put in fight or flight mode where you're like um, i mean well it, it, when there's danger i think it's really one and then subsequently the other where it's you fight and then you flight mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it's it's but so many people in domestic violence situations physical domestic violence situations everybody has their own situation and 
sometimes you have women or men um, that fear leaving mm -hmm. because they're afraid of what the consequences would be they're afraid of what the it, other it would person be far would do. worse than if they stayed that's what they fear right that's the fear um and 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 you know and in, in dealing with where i work you mm -hmm. know and and for the many years i worked you know in a bail bond company bailing people out of jail i've seen a lot of cases of domestic violence and the the part that would get me of course are the women who would try to bail them out after they put them back in jail. Well, that if they put them in jail, they would bail them out. And of course, um, out here, the judges aren't having that. So like, you know, if you got your husband arrested and it was a domestic violence case, well, then you're like, all right, you know, I'm going to come and bail them out. The judge won't have that. Because you put them in here. Right. See, here's the situation with that. Laws have become very, very strict on DV cases because there was femicide. That's how they called it. Femicide. femicide. Which is? Which is the killing of women. It was the, you know, within relationships. Um, where was it? It was years ago. Years ago. That, um, uh, well, people from New York would, you know, probably remember this. There was a dude who killed his, um, I think she was his girlfriend. But I think she didn't either want to be with him anymore or something like that. But she was pregnant. Okay. She was pregnant with his baby. And they got into it. What have you. And he literally gutted her. This was in the Bronx. It was in the Bronx. He gutted her. He And I remember this story clear as day because I was reading it in the paper. And they had it in the news too. And it was like so gut-wrenching for me. But he, he stabbed her several times. He, I want to see if I say this right. He removed her voice box. She couldn't scream. He removed her voice box and threw it in the garbage disposal. That's how brutal, guys. Mm -hmm. That's how brutal it was. Okay? All because she said she didn't want to be with him and, you know, whatever the case may be. This man had the audacity to go to the airport with the same bloody shirt that he had on and try to catch a flight to, to DR. Of course, you're going on an airplane with a bloody shirt on. That might cause suspicion. I'm Maybe. just saying. Not a tie dye They shirt. ended up arresting him. They so ended up it, arresting it, him on the plane. Literally, he butchered her. He butchered her. Mm. Nice. This is also the reason why a lot of, you know, women, maybe men, because, hey, listen, I'm not calling you guys punks, but you got some serial females out there. You got some crazy females out there, too. You guys, are, you know how I feel about it, because I already, how many times I've done videos and stuff and letting you guys know these women actually exist. Mm -hmm. These females actually exist. Don't let the, oh, you know, I'm an innocent pretty girl. She probably got like 10 bodies under her bed. It can happen. Mm -hmm. You know, it can happen. You have female serial killers. You have female psychopaths. You have female sociopaths. Mm -hmm. How many of them are on death row now? You know, so... And they still play that innocent role that... Of course. Yeah. He abused me for years and that... And you know what? The only... I mean, listen, there, there are three sides to every story. There's yours and the truth. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day... You guys just have to learn to use discernment. But you, you do have women that are scared. They're scared. You have men that are scared. Every situation is different. So I couldn't sit there and say, pack your shit and leave. I don't know what the situation is. Mm -hmm. For all I know, he's got you sleeping on a landmine. I don't know. I don't know. And I can't say. You can't just skip the words he has you sleeping on a landmine. I don't. Listen. I don't know. But I can't tell someone, well, you need to just get up. I, I'm I'm very um, adamant on telling people you need to figure out a plan. You need to plan very carefully, you know, draw up your blueprints and make sure every T is crossed, every I is dotted. Because, you know, if you 
you know, slip them a Mickey or something. I don't know. And you're trying to run out the house and leave. You know, I mean, but you got to do it. You have to be concise. You have to be very thorough with how you're going well, to you handle that. Well, you have to, as you say all the time, make sure you have enough proof and evidence that... Yeah, and, and the thing of it is, I've spoken to people. I have spoken to people um, from all over. And every state, I mean, in the U.S., every state is different. And mm -hmm. I've spoken to one person. He was dealing with a, you know, child battle, like, you know, with the court the family courts Custody and um she was putting him through hell you know you have men who love their kids excuse me they love their kids and these females they're gonna do any and everything it takes to to make their lives miserable because they're miserable people mm -hmm. misery loves company and i you know i i tell people all the time just don't let your emotions get in the way you have to be logical. You have to be logical with these kinds of people. You can't be emotional because if you're overly emotional or if you're reactive, they're going to use that against you. And, you know, if they decide to, you know, do uh, record you or something or, you know, I mean, they can omit certain things on their end, but they have everything you said on your end. It's, you have to be careful with it. And, I just, I recently put up a post on Instagram and there was a guy who commented on my post and I actually have to respond, which I will, if you're watching. Um, but I was reading it. I was reading it on my way home and he was telling, you know, he was saying about his, the female narc, you know, he's dealing with a female and in the beginning she told him, oh, I'm going to, you're going to, I'm going to have your babies and we're going to have twins and blah, 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 whatever. Him, like any other dude, thought, oh, yeah, that's cute, you know. He's like, yo, this bitch is crazy. <laughs> she was. He was like, every time they'd make love, he'd, you know, pull out protection. She would, she'll deny him sex. She didn't want to have it. I told you, they will try to trap you. They will try to trap you, whether you're drunk, <laughs> whether you're asleep. You know, they, they will do things and and it's not to trap you. Narcissists don't try to trap you because they love you. They trap you for their own benefit. They trap you because yeah, they just want you to be around when they want you to be around and you just better be there You're when they call you. another toy on their shelf to play with. Uh, listen, I got enough toys. Mm, All right, we know about else. we know about uh, your friend. But we know about it. At the end of the day, it's it's you know, it's to me it's just like after learning everything I've learned mm -hmm. and just, you know, the fact that people come to me and say, you know, you help so much. And I'm glad. I'm glad I'm able to do that. You know, I really wish I had known all of this sooner. But learning everything I learned and seeing everything for what it was, I'm not going to deny it. It hurt. It did hurt. Like, I'm sitting there like, damn. You know, I I was completely... I was a good person. I really was. And I'm not tooting my own horn. I was a really good person. And to be shitted on the way I was. I think the way that that sentence should be formatted is, is you're still a good person. You were a good oh, yeah. person to him. I was. And and you know something? He lost out on a good person. I know. I know. And I know he knows too. And at the end of the day, it's... It's, it's, I'm not going to lie. There is bad blood. And there is, but I think that bad blood, that boiling blood is what's keeping, keeping me up here mm -hmm. rather than here. I mean, as far as that situation is concerned, you know what I'm saying? Because before, man, you guys would have seen me before. You guys would have been like, this is not the same person. You're not the same person. I was, you know, and you guys have heard the story about my discard. You guys have heard everything that I have gone through with it. And I was just like, dude, I was sick. I really was. But you know what? Every so often, I'm not going to lie, the anger creeps in. Because it's like, I don't, I don't wish bad on anybody. I really don't. I don't wish bad on anybody. I'm no one to wish bad on anyone because even if I did, God wouldn't, not if it's coming from mm -hmm. me, you know, but 
I do pray to God and I'm like, I hope you, your will is something that humbles them really, really well. Mm -hmm. I see it this way. Humble yourself before God does. Humble yourself before His God does. Serious. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> listen. Now, is there, the only reason I ask this is because um, my relationship was for a very long time. Your relationship is, was a lot shorter than mine. And it seems I have no feelings. Like, there is nothing. Nothing. No anger, no frustration, nothing. There is nothing. Nothing. Well, you you broke because you know what? It was like I said in the, uh, the discard crash course mm -hmm. video. The love was probably gone a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And it was just attachment. Mm -hmm. Because a trauma bond is simply an attachment. Okay. And when... I don't know what the heck is going on with my... <laughs> I don't really know. But, um, they don't know what to... <laughs> um, but the attachments mm -hmm. that you had in place with her, mm -hmm. that was what was holding you two together. But the attachment of what if there was, I'm, I understand in your sense of the attachment because I still loved her. She obviously did. <clears throat> but it, the attachment of what extent? What if I told you you didn't? Didn't what? Love her. But you felt attached to her because of your codependency. Okay. Kind so it. it's like to say, okay. You were in love with her, obviously, in the beginning. Yes. You were in love with yes. her. And she depicted uh -huh. her idea of what love was to you. I, I, I understand when you're like, yes, I never wished her ill will, but there was no, like... Well, when you break an attachment, what, what else is there? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like... You come to the terms. Mm -hmm. You basically like said to yourself, okay, I, after a certain mm -hmm. point, after a certain point, the love, you know, I mean, listen, it could have been year four. It could have been year five. It could have been any year, you know, but when all that was going on mm -hmm. between the two of you, you clearly, I think consciously, or should I say, no, I should say subconsciously. Subconsciously, you clearly knew something was wrong. You clearly knew that yes. this ain't right. Yeah. Something with this dynamic isn't right. But consciously, you were still fighting for it. You were still trying. Mm -hmm. You were still holding on because you wanted to convince your subconscious that she's... Going she something. just needs to be loved mm -hmm. more. She just needs to be. She just needs a little bit of it. No, what she needed was a boot to the ass. That's mm -hmm. what she needed. But in, I think in most cases for codependent people, our subconscious and our conscious fight with each other. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, it's like okay, you're treating me like shit. One minute mm -hmm. you're doing all of this. I'm trying to figure out what's wrong. She deflected it onto you clearly because, you know, mm -hmm. she doesn't have a problem. You know, narcissists, they don't have problems. They're just the fucking peaches of the world. And <laughs> mind you, this is the extrovert. Hers is the extrovert. Hers is the one that's like, you know, I'm, we're, we're happy. And you know we're... what's funny? I was um, going through my Facebook um, mm -hmm. message, uh, memories, still deleting. Facebook memories after two years they're still coming up I'm like Facebook come on I'm like done with deleting and I think it was something about um we were sleeping and then there was something and I call her looking at me and I asked her what she was looking at me for and she says I'm counting down the days of when we were engaged or something and we were getting married um I'm counting down the days of when I'm getting gonna be able to get married to you and I in the Thing. I was like, oh yeah, I'm thinking about it. This I'm like, now I think about. It, I'm like, who says that to somebody? I'm counting down the days of when, when we're, we're gonna, gonna get married. married. Uh, 
I mean, you know what? I, I, I don't know if that's cold talk for I'm counting down the days where I'm going to take your last name and suck the last out of last breath. Because out I, of I, at that time it was very rough. That's when the family, you know, whole family issue and all that. So it was like. Well, you got to also remember, Amanda, how you the basis of how you two met, you know, mm -hmm. that that right there. I mean, I think when she saw that you weren't going anywhere, mm -hmm. that's when she knew because mm -hmm. anybody else. Well, well, now let me rephrase that. Anyone with a secure attachment would have said, fuck out of here. <laughs> I ain't doing this with you. No. Mm -hmm. But how you two met, mm -hmm. you know, under those circumstances, circumstances yeah. and the fact that you stayed, mm -hmm. the fact that you put up with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. Who's who? Listen, unless it's someone who's clearly psychopathic, you know, regardless, because empathetic people and people who have a conscience, mm -hmm. people who have a conscience. Well, psychopaths don't have consciences, but. People who have a conscience will not take more than what you can give. They will not take advantage of you. Mm -hmm. They will not take advantage of you. They will not. I was once, um, this was years ago, years ago, once dating a guy. And um, within the first few months of us dating, he was trying to buy me all kinds of stuff. Trying to buy me a new phone, trying to buy me this, trying to buy me. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, yo, you need to pop that bubble. And he's like, what do you mean? I said, first and foremost, I think you're doing all of this because you're infatuated with me. That's someone who has a conscience because they're seeing clearly what the other person is doing. I am not comfortable with someone who I have clearly just started dating buying me things i'm not comfortable with that mm -hmm. oh i want to buy you this i want to buy you that i want to buy you that. no i don't what why because you want to lock me down you want to hold me down like I, I don't like that and interestingly enough when i you know listen if you want to get me a nice gift as a gesture you know i thought about you erica you know here i wanted to get this for you that's fine that's fine I, i'm perfectly fine with that but when I just say, you know what, I'm looking at phones. You know what, I got to get a new phone. Come on, let's go to the let's go to the phone store right now. What are you talking about? Let's go to the phone store right now. No, no, I just said I got to get a new phone. I'm not saying buy me. You know, some people may take that. You know, like oh, you take something, they take something you say, and it's just like oh, let's don't buy my love. It's not gonna happen. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't believe. I'm not with the praise. I'm not with that either. I don't like it. I feel very uncomfortable when someone tries to be like oh you know but you're you're a queen and you're this you're my oh, queen the fuck off the floor off your knees get <laughs> off your knees right now no i don't like it i do not like it and i've you know at the end of the day it's like i don't like i don't do worship i don't do any of that you know only one you should be worshiping is god that's it don't <laughs> that's on him bro not on me i'm just letting you know that now i don't like it i don't like it and you have females obviously who will take advantage of that mm -hmm. you know they know when a man guys they a woman knows when a dude or you know or a woman because whatever situation it is they know how to take advantage they really know how to take advantage especially if you're willing to put up with certain things mm -hmm. you have to nip it in the bud you're willing, put it this way, if you're willing to put up with things that other people, most normal people, because let's face facts, Amanda, we were not normal. No. We have flaws, yeah. you know? We have flaws. We had codependency mm -hmm. issues. We had, you know, we were trying to run away from trauma that we had. And we ran into the arms of people who had even more Bullshit. fucked up trauma. Yeah. So it's like, shit, wait a minute. We I got my stuff. Say, now you got too much shit for... Uh, I got my own shit to do. But it, you know what? And and for me, I, I, hey, listen. I, I said it before. I'll say it again. The man I fell in love with is dead. Okay? He's gone. And he's buried next to the old me. Mm -hmm. Okay? That is just the way it's going to be. That's just the way it is. And 
This person mm -hmm. who exists in this world, I do not know him. Mm -hmm. Okay? He's a stranger. Mm -hmm. And that's, gonna, that's just the way it is. But, listen, I, I can't... I can't sit here and say that there were not good parts of him. Were they genuine? I don't know. Were they, I don't know. Were they real? I don't know. I don't know, but I do know that one thing I'm not going to do, because that's the one thing I don't encourage. I don't encourage shaming, and I'm not going to do that. But he was really fucked up towards me. You sure? No, no shaming. You sure? No shaming. Okay. Okay. You sure? Yours was a twat. I'm just gonna say You it. just said no shame. <laughs> that was a twat move though. I'm sorry. That was a twat move. You just said no nah, shame. That, that right there. Hey, was a come twat on. Move. You said no shame. I mean, listen. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you on that whole that they're dead and everything. I I my mind just does not have me remember any part of that life for me. It's you know what? It's it's like a fogged memory for me fog memory for me because i remember meeting her i remember this part like it's like a timeline it's a dramatic timeline i remember meeting her i remember proposing and then boop, that was the end everything in between is like a blur because you it's it's which brings up the interesting concept that alicia was talking about with the whole um I don't want to say the wrong name. Hippo, hippo. The hippo, hippo word. The hippopotamus word. <laughs> I have to look it up. I, I have to, um, I have to. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know what the hell is wrong with me, guys. Up today, I guys. And we're my not head, drinking alcohol. Head, and we're not. We're, we're not it, drinking it, alcohol. I, it is sip chat, but I, we're not. I'm sober drinking. sip chat. This is I, sober <laughs> sip chat. It's but, just messed up. I'm going to look up that information, but yeah, it it's it's where um, the abuse was so extensive that it fucked up with your memory. It messed up. It messed up your. There are certain parts of your brain that was completely tampered with, mm -hmm. and it, you know, it recollects maybe certain things, but not everything, you know. And you guys had over a decade, mm -hmm. you know. So, I, I just don't like them. That's, I told you. What did I tell you? But I mean, it's it's, you know, you listen. The bottom line of it is, that's why I can't understand how mine was ten years, and yours was how long? Almost three. You are just boom, 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 boom. and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. So I saw in the street. Yeah, we walk past. You want to know why? You're like, if I see him in the street. <laughs> no, I'm no, like, no. yeah, so in the super the one thing I said, no, no. So. See, here's the thing. The one thing I said, I don't even go down his block. No, I, I don't. And but I, if I pass, I it, drive down that street. I, I listen every other day because I'm like, I'm not gonna not drive down that you block know, because, because you know why? It's a little different, and the reason it's a little different for me was because till this very day, mm -hmm. Amanda, I never got clarity. I didn't get clarity. Mama, how, tell me how the I got clarity. Bitch moved another bitch and see, she, you got the clarity. <laughs> okay, like, girl, sixteen days later, <laughs> she, she, you, she you saw, you ready. saw she the dating it. sites. You saw every. This is what helps people move on a little bit more quicker than those who don't have clarity. You got your clarity. Your clarity is she's a conniving, cheating. Who shut your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> okay i on the other hand mm -hmm. i got little indications i got little peaks of certain things i saw certain things that did not look right this is why i said i'm not going to assume now at the end of the day i could just leave off the basis of you disrespecting me the way you did and mm -hmm. i treated you with nothing but respect mm -hmm. i gave you your family everybody respect and what did I get in return? I got kicked to the gutter, man. I got kicked to the fucking curb. For what? For what? And the, and I never, and to, from that point, I never understood. And I was like, I just didn't understand. But now I do. I understand now why you had done the things you did. 
I understand now why you projected onto me all of this, this bullshit. I understand it now. But when it boiled down to it, it was like, you, you which I said in um, a live before, I think. When you find out, like, if you get concrete proof, someone cheated on you, what's the first time? Well, you, you fuck around. I know I can't trust you anymore ever again. So I'm out, you know, people, that's their clarity. The problem with situations when you don't get clarity is that it leaves that, what if? What if? It leaves that big question mark. At the end of the day, there is no what if with me. Mm -hmm. There is no what if with me because I trusted you mm -hmm. and you betrayed that. You betrayed that. Though I did not get clarity on this situation. The betrayal is The me. betrayal was enough for me. Mm -hmm. The betrayal was enough for me. And it was enough for me to, you know, in, 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 instead of doing what he said I would do, which was throw myself off a roof, okay? Instead of doing that, I did the total opposite. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to, listen, this is not going to be the basis of my entire life. But as you are healing, you have a right to feel however way you feel about it. And me, I told him, if I ever see you on the streets, I will give you the respect. I saw him on the street mm -hmm. and I gave him respect. See, because I'm a woman of my word and I've always been a woman of my word. Now, anybody brings bullshit to me, that's a different story. That's a completely different story because I have every right to say what is on my mind. I have every right to feel the way I feel. I have every right to express what has happened. Mm -hmm. If I was slandering, if I was lying, if I was manipulating, mm -hmm. don't you think somebody would have been knocking on my door by now? You would have done had people at your Come door on. bang banging. And you know what? I am not doing this for clout. I don't need to. Why do I need to express to thousands of people that <laughs> I got shitted on? You know, why do I need to do that? Why do I need to put myself in a position and I don't need anybody feel, feeling pity for me. Mm -hmm. I don't need anybody feeling pity for me. I don't feel pity for me because I, look at how far I've come. Mm -hmm. I don't feel pity for me. I don't need anybody saying, well, you know, Erica, I'm sorry. For what? For what? My apology was supposed to have been given to me almost two and a half years ago. It was never given to me. Mm -hmm. Instead of me getting an apology, I got a slap in the face. That's what I got. And I'm like, all right, it's cool. That's how we do. No problem. But at the end of the day, I don't, I don't, I say what I say. I feel how I feel. And I don't let it stop me. Mm -hmm. you, you know. keep pushing. You keep winning. I don't care if I go to bed punching my pillows before I go to sleep. But I'm that I have a right. You have a right. You have a right to feel the way you do. You have a right to say whatever you want to say about the situation. You, hell, you have a right to feel better if you want to. Just don't stay stuck in it. Don't. I'm not sitting here, you know, I wonder... <sighs> I'm done with that, man. I'm so done with that. I'm like, yo, don't catch me on sneak tip. That's all I'm saying. I, I don't have, I just don't, it's done. It's over. It is what it is. And at the end of the day, I'm using what I've learned from this experience mm -hmm. to help other people. I'm using what I've learned to, to start, you know, to begin my purpose, mm -hmm. to do what I have to do. So somebody else doesn't have to go through it. Because honestly, I got dealt a shitty hand. A real shitty hand. But, you know, God has blessed me. So I can't complain too much. God saw what I went through. He saw what I was feeling. He he, he, he felt everything. I, it was the time I was praying in my bed and I was crying. I was crying so hard that it was like my prayer got so much stronger 
and so much because you know when you're praying and you're just doing it from such a genuine place mm -hmm. and god you know he he hears you know he feels your pain mm -hmm. and he doesn't want to see you go through that and he saw what i did he saw what i went through he saw everything and i said why me god what did i do to deserve that what did i do to 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 be treated this way mm -hmm. Because, you know, a lot of you understand, a lot of you understand what it feels like to be completely devoted, loving and caring. And, you know, it's like, damn, like that was really messed up. And yeah, and I, and I feel that way to this very day. I feel that way. I feel it was really fucked up. I feel that I deserved better than that. It's like, yo... I, I, like I said, I don't wish bad on anyone, but at the end of the day, it's like that whole situation right there, I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad and I have no sympathy for you. If anything fucked up came out of this situation for you, I don't. And that's the truth. I will never, I will never wish bad on you, but if something came out of this that handed you a very shitty hand, that handed you something that you were like, oh, damn, wait a minute, this is not happening right now, save your regret because I did not come with remorse. I'm not going to be remorseful about it. And I told God that too. I told him. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to know nothing. Don't want to hear it. Don't want to know nothing. Because anything that goes on after Erica has left the building has nothing to do with Erica. So don't come to me with any bullshit. Because, and that is how I treat people who are disloyal, dishonest, and betray my trust. And I'm like that with family too. I'm like that with family too. I will not... You can come knocking on my door. You can come with your pants on fire. I don't know what to tell you, man. I do not hold sympathy for people who consciously break my trust, knowingly deceive me, knowingly lie to me after I have done everything possible to try to make you happy, to try to make you feel whole because you didn't feel whole. I trusted you around my kid, everything. You did all of that? Go to God for forgiveness first because you got a better chance of him forgiving you before I do. That's the way I am. That's what I mean by holding a grudge. And at the end of the day, as much as I love that man, as much as I... I honestly, and this sounds crazy to say, but if I was married to him, I would have fucking taken a bullet for him, bro. I would have taken a fucking bullet for him. That's how much I love him. And for you to do what you did, and then you're just like, <laughs> you laugh behind my back. Cool. 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 No problem. So your friends... Your friends, you know, and, and, and guys, we've been through that stage where we were, you know, I was in obsession. I'm not going to lie about that. I was in addiction. I was watching. I was looking. I was seeing everything. Yeah. Drinking, hanging out, doing whatever. All right, cool. Making trips, doing all that. Nope. Erica's in pain. Erica's in pain. Erica is in her corner crying, depressed, in pain. And you over here lollygagging with your ex talking to different people, hanging out with your friends, doing whatever. And I'm like, all right, those tables turn. And when they turn, that same shit that I had to eat, you're going to fucking eat it too. Because there's no way I'm going to sit there and and say, well, okay, maybe I'll dust some of this. Oh, no, you won't eat all that shit on there. That, I am so empathetic, Amanda. You know that I am. Mm -hmm. You know that I am. And you know that I love my family. I love my son. I love my friends. You know, you already know how I got the other weekend when I told you, yo, you already know what the deal is mm -hmm. with me. 
But when you, as empathetic and as loving and as caring and as loyal as I am, I'm equally merciless. And I think that's one of the things that I needed to, I needed to bring that out of myself. That's my protection. That's for me. Mm -hmm. I am merciless. And if you can see, you know, hear me, I'll hear you out. I'll hear you out. I have no problem hearing you out. When you're done, I still want you to leave. And people, people, and, and people do not understand that. People look at me, go, Rika. But you were so timid and you were so this. Go, I'll tell you to go fuck yourself while I'm crying. I'm not, I'm, I'm, that's how much of a true person I am. And a lot of, a lot of the followers, a lot of people who follow the content, a lot of people who have been in, in this situation, a lot of the people who message me, who send me all of these things, all these people have been through the same thing. And that is why they're angry. That's why they're angry. A lot of them did not get clarity. Excuse me. A lot of them did not get clarity. A lot of them did not get the apology that they deserve. A lot of them did not get, you know, they didn't get, what is it, vindicated? They didn't get vindicated. They didn't get it. They didn't get, you know, they, 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 they're, they're like, yo, I got this shitty hand. And, and what? And I sat there and I was like, damn, you know, I guess I'm just meant to be unhappy. I guess I'm meant to be this way. I'm, I'm just... And I turned it around and I turned it around and I said, you know what? I said, Lord, I stopped praying for him. I said, Lord, I feel like I'm praying for a lost cause mm -hmm. and I'm not doing it no more. Because you're still using your time on him. I was putting my energy. I was sending him loving vibrations. I was doing all of that. All the while, <laughs> you were doing all this. I see how much you thought of me. I see how much you thought of me. And it was the same bullshit that I had gone through before. That's when I noticed. I'm like, yo, this is no different than the last. This is no different. Mm -hmm. And I said, all right. He got nice stuff out of it. Cool. You got some nice stuff out of it from me. No problem. Because that's material shit. I can always get myself things. It's not a big deal. But I, I was truly, I was just truly someone who, you know, man, when your own mother can't do right by you, that your woman does more better, to, better by you than your own family, you, how, how much more can you really ask for? Mm -hmm. And I know for a fact what I would get in the end. I never asked you for these things. I never told you to do this. I never told you to do that. No, instead you didn't. Of, instead of just thank you for doing it for me. But it's, I never, I never, and I said, you know, and for me, it's like, yo, it's not the fact that you never asked me to. It's the fact that the part that kills me is that I'm the one who treats you like a man. I treat you like a person, like a human being. But the one who treats you like a piece of shit, who emasculates you, gets the red carpet. There's something wrong with that there, man. There is something wrong with that there. Not my problem anymore. Not my problem anymore. And like I said, I have every right. I have every right to feel the way I do. And I will feel the way I do until I'm ready to say, okay, I'm done. It's not stopping me from growing. It's not stopping me from elevating. It's not stopping me from helping people out, making my money doing my thing it's not stopping me from any of that i'm still waking up every day 6 30 in the morning guys working my job doing what i gotta do taking care of my home taking care of my kid being with my friends having fun with you guys and helping you know helping you guys with everything you need it's not stopping you've, you've me. elevated a lot more than than expected yeah I have, and, and I'm proud of myself for you it, and be. I'm I'm happy, and, you know, I'm happy with myself. And that's at the end what you want everybody to feel. That and Self-love. Self-love. That's what it is. And I love myself so much that I'm not allowing anyone to disrupt my peace. Peace is priority. That sure enough is. Well, you, peace is priority. Put that on a t-shirt. 
peace is priority. You know, and and listen, pe peace is priority, but you know how Medea would turn it around. <laughs> peace is priority. I'm going to make this peace that I got in my bag your ass. priority. So, <laughs> but, you know, it is... <laughs> It is something that, it's an experience. It definitely is an experience. Narcissistic abuse. And guys, it, it the person doesn't have to be a full-blown narcissist. They can have narcissistic tendencies. They can be narcissistic, okay? They can be a narcissist. They can, we can go further on certain things. They could be a codependent. You know, narcissists are known to be codependents too. They can be a lot of different things. They could be a sociopath. But at the end of the day, you learn from the experience mm -hmm. and you have one or two paths. You're going to take the road less taken and you're actually going to go and conquer your fears and move forward. And no, remember what you told me when you said it's like putting the nail in the coffin, mm -hmm. the final nail in the coffin that it's going to be, that it's completely yes. over. Yes. How did you feel when you said that? When I filed the papers, you said? When you did, yeah, when you filed the divorce papers. And you were like, I just realized that this is... The nail in the coffin. That it's the nail in the coffin. That I'll never have be... to deal with her ever again. That there will not have to be, oh, this is this needs to get done. Or I have to speak to you about this. There is no more. That door is going to be locked, closed, sealed up forever. I, there is no going back of, I need to speak to you about anything. She does not exist to me anymore. You have, you pretty much, and that's how you know. You know, you loved someone. Unfortunately, it was just someone who doesn't exist. Somebody who existed to the point where I was willing to lose my family for. I was willing to lose my friends for. I was willing to... That's what narcissists do. I was willing to lose myself health-wise for, for her because I felt it was my duty as her wife, as her partner, as to somebody who was giving her the best love that I felt anybody could give her to do right by her and do the best that I can. And the one thing that I remember saying when everything was happening that I said to myself was, I'm going to do everything in my power to know that I did the best thing that I could. I'm not going to say that I didn't try everything. Were you going to willingly sacrifice people or was it something that she like, gave um, you the impression to believe? In the beginning, she gave me the impression because when we got engaged, she said to me, um, we're family now. I'm your family now. See that right and there. And I'm like, you're my. Yeah, that right there is. You're my. It's me and you. I'm number one. And I'm like, okay, right. I, I understand. In my head, I'm like, bitch, you've always been number one. <laughs> what do you mean? How much more number one can you be when you're number one that I'm practically not hanging out with anybody except you? I literally eat, breathe you. I wake up thinking about you. I come to bed asking. Is there anything you need me to do for you? What more? I can't give you the blood in my veins. So for her to say to me when we got engaged, oh, I'm your family now. I'm number one. Yeah, no, that's possession. That that one thing I can say, truthfully, he, he wasn't. Um, he wasn't like that with me. And I wasn't like that with him. Like, I didn't, you know what? I didn't have any issues with anyone in his family clearly you know um not until certain masks mm -hmm. started to slip off but i never had issues what i did have an issue with was his inconsideration oh i had like you say the whole thing i should have i should have done left <laughs> i should have done left well, i mean at 20 20 Five? I should have left at 25 when she married her first husband. I, you know what the thing is? Too? I should have left. I should have deleted the number. I should have fucking 
for a such shit up well, to my yeah. house. I should have told her to turn the fuck con- around and con- get the fuck out. Considering, <laughs> considering the circumstance under how you two met, and then me, me, with me, it wasn't. It, it just started going downhill after a certain period because of that situation that happened. But I had flags then. I I I I had a whole house full of flags. Yeah, whole no, house I full of flags. in the beginning I wasn't. I didn't see you really notice. I mean, there were certain things that caught my eye, but it wasn't anything too crazy. Um, I think that's also what makes my mind or what I've made the mental decision as into that's I'm not going to allow that to come into my mind anymore because I had everything in front of me, Right. everything in front of me. And because I loved her so much, I didn't see it. But she didn't love me enough to leave me alone to not do it to me anymore. To say, okay, if if that's what you were doing, that was your M.O., why couldn't you have that finish well, line shit, then? at least mine warned me ahead of time. He told me, I don't want to hurt you. And I'm like, I... You know, I, I guess the, the the difference, and again, this is where yours is the extroverted. Yours is the one who, she's just really selfish. She's selfish and she's just like, things have to look a certain way. Things have to appear. They have to be a certain way. With me, it was, I I was making excuses. I was, you know, you've been single for so long, you know, maybe it just takes a while for you to get accustomed, you know, to consider someone else's feelings and consider the other person and, you know, do, do, you know, but I, I got that flipped on to me as you're trying to control me. Me telling you to be considerate of me is not trying to control you. That's me telling you you're being a dick, Mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's layman's terms, but Yours was just like, you know, it's, it's just, she's just a typical female narcissist. She's, she's just that, this is the way I like it. This is the way I want it. This is the way it has to be, you know, and the back and forth, that bullshit, that back and forth bullshit. I mean, that was just, you you know, it, it, like I told you that you're, you're writing your story had triggered me so many times. I, I had to stop and I was like, <laughs> what wtf like that was my that was my thought and i'm like i was like yo is man you man you already know my mind i was just like yo is this he made a go like seriously is is that you know but in in looking at it and seeing things for you know what they were i i had put my relationship in comparison to yours mm-hmm. and Mine was more, it was more filled with suspicious minds, you know, it was like, it was just like, I, I listen, I'm not going to make excuses for him anymore. You know, he was being an asshole to me because he thought I was like his ex. He thought I was like her and I wasn't, I was not. And I'm like, you, when you're fighting, you know, it's one thing you got to understand when you're dealing with someone else's trauma, you're fighting someone else's demons. Like, and I tried, I tried, you know, to prove and I tried to show and I don't know if I got looked at as you're, why are you doing all this? What do you feel guilty about? Mm-hmm. I didn't feel guilty about anything. I didn't do anything. But when you get to a point that you're apologizing to someone who's hurting you or for hurting you. Like you hurt me, but I'm apologizing to you. That doesn't mm-hmm. that doesn't make sense. And you know, it it's it's I think one of the where we kind of match is that you've been in one relationship with one narcissist and I've been in many relationships with other narcissists. Mm-hmm. So we kind of like we, we meet, meet there. Somewhere. We meet there. But I, I, this just the selfishness and the audacity and the, the like, it, it just, it just disgusts me. I think the only thing, and it's a weird way to say it, and I'm sure in some way, you would you would probably be able to understand. 
though it was such a negative, it was such a traumatizing thing, it was such a heart-wrenching thing, rip your heart out, stomp on it, run a bus, all that stuff. The most positive thing I got out of this was to relearn myself, to set my boundaries, um, learn my strategic ways of what my tolerance is. Yeah. And I see a completely different person in myself. I'm able to express myself completely different. Um, let people know how I feel. Um, I, I take that whole spoonful of I don't give a fuck. Uh, I'm going to do, say, get when I want, how I want. And I say to myself, I've spent 10 years of my life telling somebody that they're beautiful every day, every morning. I take a lot more pictures of myself. I never did that. I look at myself every morning and I'm like, you are a fly bitch. There you go. I, I make sure I get a haircut every two weeks. I make sure I take care of myself. Because you were too busy putting her I was on the too, pedestal. I was too busy taking care of her. And I realized that though this negative was so traumatizing, it gave me that foot in my own ass to say, cut the fucking shit and take care of yourself. Because you are only one person and you are only one unique person. Self-care is important. You have to you have to do self-care. It's it's extremely important. And I learned that with my codependency, because everything listed under codependency, I fell in that criteria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I felt anxious when I was left alone. Mm -hmm. I felt anxious when he would, you know, go and and it, it it wasn't because you don't want them to be with their friends, you don't want them mm -hmm. to be out and about. It was because, you know, my insecurities didn't start kicking in until after the situation happened. Because it's like, you 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 think I got one over on you. So, because people have that mentality of, you got one over on me, so it's only right that I get one over on you. I think I was reversed. I think I was completely reversed. I had my insecurities in the beginning. And because um, I questioned everything. Every person she spoke to, I remember I like literally flipped out on her because she had a mechanic. But I knew what she was doing because she was doing it to me in front of my face. She was literally flirting with this man in front of my face. And it sent me up the fucking wall. And I'm like, why are you doing that for? Do you understand? I want to go over. He's four times the size of me. And I want to throw him. And this is you doing this. It's not him. She was trying you, lady. It's not him. He's doing his job and you're enticing him. You're flirting with him in front of me because you want to get a free fucking filter. Do you? What happens when I'm not here? What happens when I'm not here? When you don't bring me to the shop with you? What are you talking to him about? What are you promising him? Because you want to get a free oil change. You want to get a full fucking tire rotation. Because now he's looking at me like, oh, you don't know what we talk about. I take, I literally, I swear to God, Erica, that, that's why I say to myself, oh, you can smack yourself. I was on a phone call with her. She refused to pick up my phone call. So I texted her and I said, pick up the phone, blah, blah, blah. She was sitting in IHOP with him having lunch. And I'm like, where are you? Oh, I'm doing the laundry. I'm like, doing the laundry? It's fucking three o'clock. You're supposed to pick me up in about two hours and i'm like why do i hear forks and knives it's not a fucking laundry man i'm having lunch i'm like oh who are you having lunch with your sister and then i heard his voice and i knew his voice because i had heard him at the car mechanic place i know his voice i'm like is that patrick and she's like oh my god yeah it's patrick and i'm like you're supposed to be picking me up in two hours. First of all, wait, wait, wait. Let's roll back for a second. She's giving you attitude? Yeah, she's getting mad at me because I'm calling her in the middle of her lunch thing. When I'm like, yo. After she just lied to you that yeah. she was doing laundry. Uh-huh. And I'm like, what are you doing having lunch with this guy? Oh, well, I, you know, I came and I had to get my filter checked. And I'm like, okay, so what, you couldn't get your filter checked and fucking bounce? Like, what it... Oh, you know, he wanted to say, I said, and why couldn't you say, no, thank you. Did you pay for the filter? No. I said, and so does that mean you have to go to lunch with him because he gave you a free filter? 
find a new fucking mechanic. Or don't make me talk to this man. Oh, you stop it. It's not that big of a deal. I said, okay, so let me go find the next person, the next woman on the street and take her out to dinner tonight and let's see how you like it. There were, I mean, like I said, there was a house full of flags, house full of flags. But because I loved her that much, I didn't, I didn't take those flags. I didn't attach them to my arms and fly away. But now. I'm okay. getting triggered already. You, you see, you see what I deal with. Erica knows my little side stories. I'm getting triggered Erica already. knows my little side stories and Erica's, right, Erica's like, you know, you, and I'm like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just me. I, I said today, as a matter of fact, it's funny. I said today, I said, I will not do anything that does not benefit me. Do you understand that? I said to somebody, what I do now, I will only do that benefits me. She says to me, well, that's, that's selfish. I told you, you know, who it is. Mm-hmm. That's selfish of you to think because the world doesn't revolve around you. I said, I understand that. But do you realize when things benefit me, they benefit the people that I'm involved with. So why would I not want to do things that benefit me? Why would I want to put other people before me? Because those that are with me and are loyal with me and There's I love. Wrong. Well, one, one, for one... There's nothing wrong with being selfish with yourself because you're doing things constructive to better yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Two, she's interpreting that because then that means taking away from mm -hmm. her, mm -hmm. from what she wants in, in this. Because people, you know, you can look at someone as being selfish, but people look at people being selfish in totally different perspectives. Mm -hmm. So... If I am in a relationship with you mm -hmm. and you are being selfish, being inconsiderate, doing, yes, that is a negative way of being selfish. But if you are doing things to better yourself and which is perfectly fine because it, the problem with people in this world that I notice is they want people that are fucking already made. Like, like if you came out of a factory, you know, like, oh, well. I want this and that and this and that and this and that. Well, get a fucking Barbie doll. Like, seriously, I, I, I don't. Everybody comes with baggage. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like I said it before, I'm going to say it again. <laughs> I worked through my trauma. I did mm -hmm. my healing. I did everything I needed to do for myself. Why on God's green earth am I going to take your baggage? When I just finished getting rid of my own, why am I going to do that? I'm not doing it. Nope, can't do it. Won't so do then it. That's why I do what I do. You got, and you know what? But you're not obligated to anyone. I know, but I, you're not obligated. And if you, I go like this, you do what you gotta do. You do what you gotta do. If it does not, if it if it seeks to disrupt your peace, you gotta kick it to the curb, and that's it. At the end of the day, we. I like testing people. Now all of a sudden, that's my new thing. I test people. I mean, listen, you you know how I feel about that. But my my <laughs> thing of it is is my thing is I'm like this. You know, I, I'm very upfront. I'm very direct. I tell people how it is. I tell people what I do not want. I do not want a relationship right now. I don't want to be with anyone right now. I don't want to deal with anyone right now. You don't now. even have time for yourself. And, and you know what? But let me tell you something. If <laughs> I really, truly wanted to be in one, you find I time. would find time for it. I understand. It. But I'm constantly telling you. I'm like, yo, why are you? you, you, you I mean, it's great. You're, you're, you're doing such great things. And I'm like, I'm always telling you. I'm like, yo, E gotta find time for yourself you know sleep and do stuff for yourself yeah. i'm by myself in the shower i'm not talking about <laughs> I mean, that i just like i just no like, i mean just in general like oh just taking I, was, a shower, I was like, like wait, what you know, i i listen <laughs> but i'm I, saying you you i was in a relationship and i had two jobs like i i but i made time and i did it because i wanted to do it i did it because you know, I as tired as I was, as tired as he was, I did it because I was like, yo, this person means a lot to me. This person is my person, you know, so I will do what's necessary to to try to make it work. But of course, I had all that thrown in my face anyway. I don't want a person no more. I am just to a point where I honestly... We want COVID to be over so we could go to Vegas. Oh, yeah. That's definitely... Then we already made a plan. That's the first trip, right? 
going to Vegas. In the meantime, we'll just go to Jersey for now. Okay. <laughs> we'll go to Jersey. But no, but yeah, you know, I, I don't, I just don't want to. And when people are like, oh, you know, you, you still haven't gotten, no, no, it's not, it has, it has nothing to do with it. I do not want to. Can I, can I, can a bitch be single for a while? Why can are you trying to kill your vibe? Vibe. No, I, I, I want to be, you know, I don't want to be involved with anyone. Period. You know what you should say? I am in a relationship with myself. I do, but they don't matter. I told you. But what you. they got to do with me? I told, <laughs> I told you. I told you. What did I tell you? It, it, it's, you know what? Look and, at her. And you could be, you Look can at her. be. Look you can be honest. I'm honest. I'm Yo, really I'm security honest. in the street with this girl. I'm honest, though. I'm security I told in the street with this girl. I'm like, yo, do I have to, like... She'd be like, yo, Ninja, you want to, like, slow it down in the street? I'm like, because I need to know who's up in front, because... I'm... Listen, I truthfully have reached that point. I used to love the idea. I, I used to love love, and I just don't feel it. I really don't feel it. You don't feel love that way. I... I just, I don't feel it. Like, I am, I am impotent. I really am. I, know. I can't get it up. And that's just oh. the way it is. Well, I'm, I'm being serious. Where? I can't. Where? Well, you know what I mean. I can't, like, I don't. This experience has. I still love being in love. I love being in love with myself. And that's, and that's fine. I love that's being in love with myself. Fine. I love. Being there with my friends. I love being there with my family. I think that it's just like, you know what? I think it's a shift. It's like a reversal. It's a reversal. I think like with this whole, this whole shift is where people who were, you know, taken advantage of, taken for granted and, you know, loved to be in love, loved to be in a relationship, always wanted to have someone mm -hmm. to be in a committed relationship. And those who were non-committal and feared relationships and blah, blah, blah and all that. It's like that shift. Whereas, like, you know, you, you, if you dealt with someone, I strongly believe, and I stick by this when I say it, he suffers PTSD. He suffers PTSD. That is my strong belief. He never cleared out his trauma. He never let go of his past. He never did any of that. He never confronted his own mother. He never confronted the, the issues that he has had. He never confronted anything. All he did was shit hit the fan. All right. I'm just going to turn a blind eye to it and just, you know, ran away from his shit. Run, he just ran away. He's a runner. And that's just the way he is. And I don't like to use the term coward, but you know something? I've used it with him once and I told him it's a real fucking coward move that you're doing. But it is what it is. What did I get? I got rage. He he cursed me out. He yelled at me. He did all kinds of stuff. I didn't To the point, he was cursing on the phone that I didn't even think it was the same person on the phone because that was how loud he was yelling at me and sometimes people don't like the mirror being put to them you don't like the mirror i'm sorry no i'm not sorry because you know what you need to understand that we all come to a realization at some point and the realization for me is i no longer want to be in love i'm almost 40 years old i am at the prime of my life i should be honestly i don't know what's gonna happen with you I should, I, you know what? We're going to be 40 at the same time. Listen, I'm dragging you out the Maybe it's just not my time to be in love. Maybe it's just right Girl, now, it's not my time to... You got to help me. It's not my time to have love because honestly... You got to help me because I'm I'm ready to be a hoe in the street. Come on. <laughs> you got to catch up. You gonna I don't know what it is to be a hoe. I'm not, I don't mean technically. I might be able to get you somebody who does, but... No, I no, because... <laughs> I don't know. I'm saying, I, I, again... I spent so much time with somebody. I'm ready to just fall out. Not responsibly. Responsibly. I mean, yes, listen, have date. fun. There's nothing wrong no, with dating. No, but I mean, I'm not even saying date. I'll I'm, be your wingman. I'm talking about go and have fun. I'm gonna tell you right and now. I have though, a schedule. I'll be and, your. I'll be your wingman. But let I me mean, like. No, you can't <laughs> be my wingman. I'm telling you. See, see this one here. This one. I'm here. offering. No, 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 no. I'm gonna tell you why. But what do I always tell you? What do I always tell you? She says I can't be her wingman because I'll end up taking all the freaking chicks at the club, and and it's not. I, we can't even go to a club because of fucking COVID. Well, we I'm saying, do? I'm saying when everything eventually meet them at the bus stop or something. Hey, text me. No, um, it's not just Erica's a beautiful woman. Obviously, I Erica. You. Erica has a presence about her. That's it's just very entire. It's it's very welcoming. So even 
this is enough, but who she is as a person, I'd be like, hello, hello. And they'd be like, oh my God, like I better gonna use you. Girl, your makeup's so good. I'd be like, I fucking came here. And this chick's bagging the numbers. And they still hand on to be like, here you go. I don't know these chicks. They talking to you all night. I don't know them. Oh, well, I did you the favor. No, I don't want them now because they expecting you to call. Erica didn't look like this all the damn time. I, don't I mean, well, I, I look, I look, you know, because obviously I did have a certain look to myself, a certain appeal to myself, but... I think it's because I have such confidence now. I, I just said you have my a confidence. Thing. Is... I've always said, and I said, and there's only two people I've said this to. There's an X factor about people. Some people have it that they walk into a room and it could be a crowded ass room. Somebody will spot you in the corner and be like, who is that? Yeah. I've only known two people in my whole lifetime that I can say without a doubt could be a packed fucking room and they'd be like who is that two people in my whole life you have that kind of presence that if you walk into a room they'd be like hold on a second who is that it's the red hair it's just yes the, the red hair yes but it's just the, you carry that confidence in yourself that they'd be like who is that well yeah i mean not to be mistaken with a freaking narcissist who walks into the room and they're like I'm here. And then bow down Erica, to me. Erica will come and say, nope, not talking to you because you look like you have a whole bunch of shit that I don't want to deal with. Because she'll ask you three questions and then she'll get those three questions. She'll get a whole, whole full sheet of answers and be like, no, thank you. It was nice talking to you, but no, I'm going to go over there. Thank you. Because every red flag I never paid attention to before. <laughs> it's it showing up like, up. Bing, 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 bing. it pops up and people will be like, what did I say? What did I, just, just, you, you just, just opened you. your mouth. I didn't like what I heard. <laughs> Can you please just turn around and go about your business? That's so, it. That's, that's just basic. That's why I said 40. 40 is a new 20 and I'm ready for it to come. I mean, you know, I, there are, listen, I'm not even going to I know you're a homebody. I know you're a homebody. We can oh. Netflix and chill four times I'm boring. Over. I'm so now, we're not gonna, boring. Like, we're not going to, see, you're boring. I get it. You're probably not. You're part, I'm not a party person either, but I like doing some stupid shit. I like being dumb and but silly. We, and we've, we've had fun like where it didn't require too much. You know, we we, we done, done walked the world in New York yeah, City. Yeah, we have fun. We explored, and you know, we and it's and it's you know it's cool. And like I would take Erica in a fucking car and just be like, "Yo, we driving west." Yeah, that's hey, road trip. You know, and it's it's that's Let's get a map and go find the shit on the east coast that we could go fucking look at. I'm I'm with it. I ain't got a man. <laughs> I ain't got no kids. I, I I just, you know what? I am going to enjoy. And I said, I hadn't genuinely smiled for a few years. I like genuinely mm -hmm. for a few years. And I'm like, now it's time to start making it up to mm -hmm. myself. Yep. I got to start making things up to myself. And we still got to do kickboxing. We got a lot of stuff to we do. We still got to go break some rooms. Uh, what else we got to do? We still got to go on that um tram. Yes. Don't think I forgot about that shit because that's coming. We'll do it during the summertime though, not or yes. Yeah, so you want to do it in the summertime when it's hot as hell? Yeah, we'll do it in the summertime. I'm not doing it when it's freezing. Springtime? I'd rather do it in the springtime. At least there's a breeze. Summertime and you want to do it when it's hot and hyperventilating and they don't have no air conditioning? Yeah. And you 3,000 feet up in the, in the sky? Well, not 3,000. That's not that high. I'm sorry. She'll do anything to get a, to get a laugh, I'm telling you, because she knows that I'll I'll probably freaking pass out being on that damn thing. But like I said, I'll get her out. She's she's listen. When I when I first started hanging out with Erica, Erica was like, mm -hmm. yeah. Now she's drinking a little bit more. We bullshit. We be gigging on each other. I mean, it's it's, but that's a genuine friendship. That's a true genuine, like, where you could be yourself around people and flaws and all. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we... Who this person is, she's a completely different person behind the camera. She be kicking my ass. I do not. Yes, you... I do not kick I her behind. I do not. Not physically, but she be, she be getting on me. We crack jokes on each other. But she be getting you know, on me. We be, we be throwing jabs at each other. But you know what? They're not covert. No. And they're not, you know, they're not meant to insult. They're just like, it's 
just jabs we throw at each other and at the end you know it's all it's harmless it's all you know just it's love and that's this it's it's the thing of the guard is completely down yeah the guard is completely down completely absolutely comfortable with each other so the fact that Erica knows she could call me in a heartbeat and I'm there for her. And I think that's the point of healing too. Because when you've healed, your guard is down. You're not mm -hmm. worried about anything. You're like, because the minute someone shows you some mm -hmm. something, it's like, mm, yeah, you, you gotta you, go. You, like, you're thinking before it even happens. You're already thinking, what am I gonna do? I mean, I'm, I still have, no, I know I have boundaries with you. I know I have things that I have to ask you. But I know I could come knock on Erica's door and be like, what you doing? Let's just put it Let's this go. way. She knows that she's always got a place to call home, you know? And at the end of the day, she's always welcome in my home. And even during this this mm -hmm. crisis, you know, we she never, ever, ever got turned away unless I wasn't home. But, you know, that never happens because she always calls me to tell me mm -hmm. I'm on my way. So, but, you know, that's, that's, that's what genuine love is. Mm -hmm. That's what it is about between two friends. That's the way it should be between two people, you mm -hmm. know, in a relationship. And and I'm just, like, for me, it's just, like, I think I would need, like, some form of a sign in order to consider being involved with someone, you know? I don't, I don't stay single because I'm like, oh, I'm waiting on this one, or I can't get over this, or I can't do I'm staying single by choice but That's there's nothing choice. wrong with that either absolutely not because I know for a fact though I was not perfect because there's a difference what did I say there's a difference between being single by choice and being single because nobody wants to deal with your mm -hmm. shit I know for a fact that I was not perfect I was not perfect and I'm not going to sit here and be like, I didn't have my own tendencies. Mm -hmm. Being a codependent, you have your own tendencies too. Mm -hmm. But I was loyal. And I was respectful. And I was honest. And I was loving. And I was caring. And I was giving. And you know, a bitch walked through the snow to bring him dinner. Me and you, we have a lot of the same... I did it though. And I'm not sitting here saying, oh, because, you know... Let me, you know, all because you're trying to find and get that golden star above your no, head. I don't need to go. Ah, listen, I can get my own golden star. That's just how it is. Oh. But at the end of the day, this was what confused me. Mm -hmm. All of that confuses you, you know, when you when you've done every and anything possible, and of course, this is before you learn certain mm -hmm. things. It's like, yo, like. I think the part that really stuck with me most was the situ with his ex. Mm -hmm. That was the part that killed me most. You told me all <laughs> that. That'll be another story for another time. But <laughs> that but that was just what put the nail in the coffin for me. Mm -hmm. That put the nail in the coffin for me. So at the end of the day, I just looked at it like, um, yeah, so this is what you're about. Okay. I'm good. That shit hurt like hell, but I did what I had to do. But look how you came out. You came out of it like a flaming phoenix. Turn up dead. Flying. Now we gonna go and Winning. Go have a fucking storm. So, it is, you know. I, I, listen. Let's put it this way. We didn't go through what we went through in vain. You know, I'm, I'm not... I keep repeating myself on it because I need to make myself abundantly clear. I don't shame. I don't tarnish. I don't slander. I don't do any of that. Okay? That is not me. That's not, you know, I'm not going to sit here and be like, because there were parts of the relationship that I was happy with. There were things that were being done that was, you know, I I treasured. Mm -hmm. I cherished those moments. There were, you know, there were a lot of things. I'm not insulting him. I have not insulted him. I have expressed how I felt about the things that he has done. And, you know, the things he has said. And people say words, oh, you know, don't let the words hurt. Words fucking hurt. They do hurt. Especially that. when you've been committed and loyal to somebody else. They hurt. And words go deep. They shouldn't sure do. And they stay long. 
they sure enough do. They sure enough do. And that is exactly why I said I got this tattoo here. Because, oh man, you know what? It, it, I hate to say it this way, but it's like showing love gets you fucked, man. It does. And someone can come to me and say, Erica, but what about unconditional love? What about it? I think the only unconditional, well, no, let me, I'm going to retract that statement because. The unconditional I'm, love I have. Is for your son. Is for my son, for God, my, well, <laughs> my immediate family. Because I know? was going to say, I was going to say the only, probably the only possible sense of unconditional love is because, is between a mother and a child. But then you have some examples that, that um unconditional love isn't present between a child and a parent. So it's, it's, listen, at the end of the day, it taught us something. Taught me how to be a fucking badass. And I'm happy with it. I'm happy because you know what? I'm just a short badass. You're a shorty. Shorty rock. Hey. But it, it just taught me that. I may be short, but I got a, a, a big. Ego, confidence. Well, no. You don't have a big ego. I'm you, growing. You, your your confidence is evolving. Mm -hmm. It's evolving. And that's something that should have happened a long time ago. Yes. But it was stunted. Hey. No, well, it was stunted because you know it was it was basically left at a certain <laughs> level. You were too busy stroking her ego. Mm. Excuse me. And not focusing on taking care of your yourself, mm -hmm. you know, that was that relationship was doomed to fail. It just lasted longer than it should have. What's that thing? What's that thing you say? People are in for what? Are some time? Do not keep people of a season in your life for a lifetime. And as many red flags as those were bolts that God was throwing at you, bro. But I know. you know, I was letting them bitches sail. <laughs> It's, it's, it's ask, ask me what bow I got now. Ying, ying, speedboat. <laughs> guys, thank you for letting us ramble. She rambled. As always. I, I You know what? Yes, I'm a rambler. I told you. I, this is all you. I come here for you. I'm a rambler. I ramble. I come here for her. I come here for the cookies. For the, the delicious meals. Because this... Is a full package. Well, it's zip chat, so it's we're chit chatting, we're talking, and it that's the whole point of we it. We're talking. A, we gonna make another edition. Um, of course, it's it's. What's the next one coming up? We got a. Uh... I have no idea. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah, because because I I like the idea of doing the shorter videos. Yes, yeah, so you've been and... you've been popping them out like pop tarts, and they're pretty, and they've you know. Maybe. I like doing the shorter videos. It's clearly the lives are the longer ones. Um, yes. And, you know, this. Your popular ones. You know, but I definitely like doing the... Because even though I have a busy schedule, I still manage to... Much popular here. Pop in here and there to... to About to get know. an assistant. Because... No, well... Uh, I, I... I... I need, you know... And listen. It's, it's working, though. It I, is working. I told you, you win it's in helping. all the time. You always win in. You always will, always will be in a win-win situation. And at least you, and you know what? You guys see me in my authentic self. Like, you see me where I'm having fun, where mm -hmm. I'm angry, where I may be sad, where I may be, you know, pensive, where I may be, you know, but at the end of the day, I am human. Mm -hmm. And I keep it 100 with you guys, so... That's the way it's going to be. But guys, thank you for letting us ramble. Thank you for letting us talk it out. Thank you for letting me be my psychotic self sometimes. Always enjoy doing it for you guys. Always enjoy being here. Thank you, Amanda, for joining me again. Always making here. it fun as always. So we, got, we hope you guys enjoyed it. We hope you guys got a little something out of it. And that's it. I guess until next time. Until next time, guys. Thank you for joining us. We love you. Namaste, all that good stuff. I'm exhausted. I'm hitting the bed. Got a lot to do. Till next time, guys.